Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson 15, and we will be using uh, common units or number of units to compare two different fractions. So this is kind of some new stuff that uh, may be a little confusing to you, so I want to go ahead and do some problems that will help you out as you go through your homework. Let's take a look. Take a look at number one. I'll do 1A and 1B to, with you together, and those are the two that they start to get at in the book. Draw an area model for each pair of fractions, use, and use it to compare the two fractions by writing greater than, less than, or equal to on the line. The first two have been partially done for you. Each rectangle represents one. So let's take a look at the first one, 1A. We're asked to compare one-half with three-fifths. And they've started to draw a couple of area models for us. And remember that in today's lesson, we decided that sometimes it's helpful to draw uh, one of the fractions with the lines running vertically, like this, and the other one with the lines running horizontally, and to basically then use the other fractions units to redivide. So let's see what we mean. So first, we ask, we have to draw a model of one half. So we've taken our whole and divided it in two, and let's go ahead and shade in one of the two halves. Awesome. Now let's look at our other fraction. Our other fraction is three fifths, and this time we're going to divide horizontally into fifths, and then we're going to need to shade in three of our fifths, right? Excellent. Now the next step we're going to do is that we're going to redivide our half into fifths and redivide our fifths into half. And that's why we did these in different directions. That's why we did vertically here and horizontally here. So let's see. Now that we've done vertically here into halves, we need to go ahead and divide further into fifths. So I'm going to grab my blue pen and do this. One, two, three, four, five. Five, five parts. That shows us that one half right here, if we divided it further into five parts, that equals five tenths, right? One, two, three, four, five out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five tenths. Let's do the same thing over here on the bottom one. We've already divided into three fifths, but now we need to go ahead and do the vertical version and divide it in half, right? And now we have the same problem, right? We have, we used to have three fifths three-fifths right here, right? Three-fifths or three-fifths right here. And now we divide it in half or multiply it by two, and we have six-tenths. So now we have like units. Now we have five-tenths and six-tenths. We know that one-half is the same as five-tenths. I'll go ahead and write that here, five-tenths. And we know that three-fifths is equal to six-tenths. And sure enough, when we have the same units, tenths, we know that six of them is greater than five of them. So five is less than six when we're working in tenths. Let's try to do the same thing over here for 1b. We have 2 thirds and 3 fourths. So the first thing we're going to do with our black pen is we are going to showcase what is 2 thirds. So we've already divided ourselves vertically into three parts, and we know that two of those three parts need to be shaded. So let's go ahead and do that. And in the second diagram, we're trying to model 3 fourths. So we've divided into 1, 2, 3 fourths using horizontal lines, and we're going to shade in 3 of the 4. And now we're going to do sort of the opposite division with each of them. So let's see, this one, this first one, which we divided into thirds, now we want to divide it into fourths. So we need to go ahead and do one, two, three, four. And that tells us that two-thirds times, let's see, times four, times four is eight-twelfths. And let's go ahead and do the other one. The other one, we had divided it horizontally into fourths. Now we need to do it vertically into thirds. So we'll do ch -ch -ch. And we're told then that three-fourths times, let's see, we divided in three parts equals, let's see, three times three is nine-twelfths. Well, now that we think about it that way, we have eight-twelfths on the top and nine-twelfths on the bottom. We know that nine-twelfths, now that we're working in the same unit, it would be would be greater to have one extra twelfth than we had here. So now we know three-fourths must be greater than two-thirds because nine-twelfths is greater than eight-twelfths. Excellent. Let's take a look at one more problem. Problem number 2D says we are going to, oops, we are going to rename the fractions as needed using multiplication in order to compare each pair of fractions by writing greater than, less than, or equal to. Now this time we're asked to compare eight-twelfths and five eighths. And those are not particularly related denominators, so it's not immediately clear to me how we would uh, how we would deal with such a problem. So one of the strategies that we have 
is that we can multiply each fraction by the denominator of the other fraction. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to grab my blue pen and say 8 twelfths. Let's see, we could take 8 twelfths and we could multiply by the denominator of the other fraction. So that's eighths. So let's see, 8 times 8 and 12 times 8. Let's see, we have to look up our multiplication tables or deep into our memory to figure out that 8 times 8 is 64. And let's see, 12 times 8. Hmm, 12 times 8 is 96. So we've expressed an equivalent fraction. It's, it is 8 twelfths, but now that we multiplied it times 8 in the numerator and the denominator, we have 64 96ths. We're going to do the same thing. I'll do this in red with 5 eighths. 5 eighths. We are going to multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction. So we have 5 eighths here, so we need to multiply it by 12 over here. So that's 5 times 12 and 8 times 12. Let's see. 5 times 12 is, let's see, is 60. And 8 times 12, oh, that's the same. 8 times 12 is the same as 12 times 8. That's 96. So now we're actually comparing two fractions where we have, the, we're in the same units. We have, we're comparing 64 96 with 60 96 ths. So our units are the same, and it looks like we have a few more of them over on this side. So I think that tells us that 64 96 is greater than 60 96 ths, and thus we know that this is the bigger number, this is the bigger number, and 8 twelfths is greater than. 5 eighths. Now I intentionally did part D of number 2 because parts A, B, and C are similar in that they use the same idea of multiplying the uh, fraction uh, times the denominator of the other fraction, but the denominators are not so big so that the, uh, the arithmetic doesn't get quite so complicated. So you'll have a better time with those problems. Let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at problem number three. Use any method to compare the fractions. Record your answer using greater than, less than, or equal to. And we're going to look at these, this, frac, this part right here, uh, 3b. We're going to compare 4 sevenths with 4 fifths. And I have a couple of different ways that I feel like we could try to solve this problem. Uh, one way is that we could draw area models, right? We could say, let's divide two area models and showcase our fractions. Let's see, the top one we're going to do in sevenths. So that's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we are going to highlight four of those. And in the bottom one, we're going to divide into fifths. So that's about one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to highlight four of those. And I think when we match our units up like this, when the units are, are of the equivalent size, we can see that four fifths is bigger than four sevenths. So I think we have enough to answer that question conclusively, that four fifths is greater than four sevenths, or four sevenths is less than four fifths. But I want to think about it one other way. In each of these cases, we have four of the units. In this case, we have four of the sevenths, and in this case, we have four of the fifths. So really, if you have four of one thing and I have four of one thing, then really, and we're trying to compare the size, then really the question is, how big are the pieces? And we know that when we've divided the whole into fewer pieces, fifths in this case, that the pieces here are bigger than here. And we see that in our diagram. Each of the pieces here, each of the fifths, is bigger than each of the little sevenths, right? Fifth fifth, 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 seventh, 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 right? So these are the bigger units. And if we have the same number of units and these are the bigger units, then we know that this is going to be the better, the bigger number. So that's two different ways that we can record our answer that four-fifths is greater than four-sevenths or that four-sevenths is less than four-fifths. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining me on another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time.